<laughs> All right, guys, KB32 here. Check it out. So we're sitting over here in uh, what I call the Freedom Studios. And the only reason I call it the Freedom Studios is I've got a reloading bench over there, which is awesome. I've got a review table over there and a gun building bench over there. And you guys right here. And, and one of the things is, is it doesn't feel very free today because in a matter of about 30 minutes last night, the Senate voted for this thing called the Bipartisan Safer Communities Act of 2022 to a vote of 64 to 34, okay? So you need a uh, majority of 60, which they had no problems. The biggest thing I have that really chaps my behind, I'm gonna be really kind on this one, is that uh, everybody, they make this statement, it's just common sense measures, it's just good common sense. Um, what exactly is common sense? Well, common sense is a sensible agreement uh, that is commonly agreed upon with a bunch of other people. I mean, you look up the definition, I don't care, whatever you want to do. But in any case, my biggest thing is, uh, some of these things really do, they, they, they may seem like it's common sense, but the problem is, is that and, and don't take it the wrong way, but the problem is, is that it uh, goes against everything that we have in our Bill of Rights. Second Amendment, uh, our right to speech, anything. I mean, here's the thing. I could say something one day and all of a sudden because I have firearms, my neighbor might be offended or something or might think that I'm threatening him. One phone call to the police right now, and guess what? My firearms are taken away from me without a problem. And this is going to be nationwide. But the problem that I have, this is the issue that I have big time, is that uh, what do you got to do to get these firearms back? There's no, does it address it in this thing? I, I don't know. I haven't read all 80 pages. And it's interesting to me is that in the matter of time that it was introduced and the Senate voted on it, nobody read those 80 pages. You know they didn't. But the problem I have is that we have a bunch of Republicans that voted for it, including Mitch McConnell. And I just want to go over that real quickly before we start talking about the stupid details. And guys, if you really want to know the details of this thing, look up every town for new, new town, every town for new town. Well, anyway, uh, minority Mitch, minority leader Mitch McConnell, Roy Blunt of Missouri, Richard Burr of North Carolina, <sighs> Richard. Shelley Capito of West Virginia, Bill Cassidy of Louisiana, Susan Collins, you probably knew that, Joni Ernst, yeah, Lindsey Graham, come on, Lindsey, Lisa Murkowski, of course, Rob Portman, Mid Romney, and Tom Tillis of North Carolina, and Todd Young. So both of my North Carolina senators voted yes for this thing. They're outgoing, I believe, which is not a big deal for them, so they're going to go ahead and vote. And everybody who thought, well, it's okay because we're going to have a, a majority next year in the House and the Senate, well, if it's voted into law, signed into law, there's not a whole lot we could do to go around it. It's just disgusting to me. All right, so let's talk about what is in the bill. And, and again, the Bipartisan Safety, Safer Communities Act. And I'm going to every town. Enhanced background checks for buyers. Now, guys, I know that you've listened to other people, and they probably told you what their thoughts are. Um, yeah. Now, I'm going to tell you exactly what my thoughts are. Established an enhanced background check process and up to three-day business days investigative period for buyers under the age of 21. Violation of your rights. That will require checking with state law enforcement, local law enforcement, in either state or local courts before a sale proceeds. This strengthens current law that already stops a gun dealer from selling a handgun to a person under 21 and any gun to a person under 18. What? Okay, support state red flag laws. And they had to go through the whole definition of what exactly is a boyfriend, a girlfriend, him friend, he shan, she friend, whatever your pronouns are today. For God's sakes, I was talking to a friend of mine. His wife is a school teacher. And she says there's people who come to school and they don't know who they are that day. I think it's bullshit. I think the kids are actually trying to play games with these folks. But it disgusts me that, well, you know, I'm the, she, it. In other words, I'm the shit. Okay, support state red flag laws provide $750 million. First of all, they provide a lot of money to these local states. Uh, the local states, the states, for to enforce these things, to enact these safe and, and these programs. When have you ever known a government agency to ever utilize any type of funds effectively, right? Uh, support crisis intervention services, including the implement implementation of state red flag laws. The bill will also unlock an additional well-established existing funding stream to support the Im implementation of red flag laws. 
I'd like to know what that is. It's probably in the bill. Take the time, read the 80 pages. I ain't got time for all that. Disarm domestic abusers. Okay, so here's the secret. Domestic abusers, anything that's domestically at home. Uh, I would like due process, you know, my constitutional right that I have, which is being taken away from me because all it takes is one person to go, you know what, fuck you, I'm going to take everything you got, and I'm going to hit you where it hurts. We're going to take your guns. Uh, <laughs> expand the current prohibition preventing convicted domestic abusers from buying or possessing guns to include not only those who abuse their spouses, but also those who abuse their current and recent dating partners. So all a partner's got to do is file a, uh, an injunction against you or uh, what do you call that thing where they got to stay a distance away or say that you've been abused. Next thing you know, you're going to go into a NICS program, which, uh, you know, anyway, it's broken. but they're going to send you into a NICS program so your name's on file forever and ever because some dumbass girlfriend got pissed off at you or a boyfriend who got his ass beat because he's a pansy by a woman or his boyfriend, or whoever the hell it is. Clarify who must run a background check. Now, this is one, Legally Armed America did a short video on this thing, which makes basically means uh, they took away the term in the, in the bill, the, you know, uh, making a, your livelihood to anybody who sells a gun. Basically, that's what it's all about. So uh, clarify existing law on what it means to be engaged in the business of selling firearms so that it is clear when unlicensed people selling guns to strangers are required to obtain an FFL and run background checks on all sales. So uh, I guess when this thing gets signed into law, it's going to be illegal. And you know what? It's only illegal if they find out about it. Uh, but here's the whole thing is how are they going to find out about it, ladies and gentlemen? They're going to keep a record of what you have on file somewhere, which they're already working on. Yeah. Okay. Crack down on gun trafficking. I agree. I think that, uh, what do they call it? Straw purchasing is bullshit. If, you know, whatever. Establish the first ever federal laws against interstate gun trafficking and straw purchasing to stop the flow of illegal guns into cities. It's amazing to me is you don't see a whole lot of guns going out into the country, <laughs> except to shoot deer and poor little innocent squirrels just sitting there like, bam, I'm going to buy myself a little 22 pellet gun so I can use it in the backyard. It'll be a lot of fun. Fund community violence intervention. This bill includes $250 million, $250 million that you know absolutely will not and <laughs> will go to really good use with these people. Uh, there's a, a county or a city down in Georgia that just, ban or just disbanded the entire police department because they felt it was wrong. The bill includes $250 million in dedicated funding for evidence-informed community-based violence intervention programs that have been proven to reduce gun violence in most affected communities using a public health approach. Okay, do me a favor right now, if you would, because you guys, basically, I look at you as the experts on this whole thing. Uh, the community. Tell me down below in your, in the, in the, in the, in the what do you call that thing where you make the uh, comments? Yes. Tell me down below exactly what you, your experience is with this. Have you ever heard of a, oh, I don't know, successful program that does this stuff? Okay. Invest in mental health services. I pretty much, this is why all the mental uh, hospitals all over the country, including those here in Pennsylvania, and to the gentleman that said, I can't believe you uh, support a, uh, a state that is anti-gun or something like that. Now, I, I support the middle of the state. Uh, we're all, it's called uh, Pennsylvania. I love this area. Pittsburgh, Philly, you can have it. Provide critical resources to expand community mental health services for children and families. Fund school-based mental health and supportive services. Invest in telehealth mental health services to expand access and invest in community crisis intervention. If it saves one life, what are your rights? I don't care about your Second Amendment rights with the, my kid. Uh, so whatever. Uh, yeah, let me know if you've ever had any experience with that and if it was successful. And there's another one, provide school safety funding. I believe in that. Fund school violence prevention efforts, training, and implementation of safety measures at primary and secondary schools. Absolutely. How about start off with keep your damn doors locked? Let's keep an armed guard or police officer on duty at all times. What's it cost to put a uh, police officer at a school? I know where my children go to school, there's an on-duty police officer at all times right there. As a matter of fact, I know him by name. And a uh, really cool dude. Uh, but here's the deal. It's cheaper to do that than it is to bury 10 kids, okay? <sighs> anyway, that's it. 
<laughs> there's a big old thing. Now this is from everytown.org, which is a great source of information if you want to know what people are digging up. But in any case, uh, I've read a bunch of stuff on this thing and uh, what are my thoughts? It's a total uh, violation of our constitutional rights. And I can't believe that uh, because in the guise that we need to do something or the guise that, you know, it makes common sense. Uh, they are kicking our constitutional rights down the road. So with that being said, guys, be careful who you vote for. Uh, I cannot wait till the guy in office is out of here because it's the blame game with him on every single thing in the entire free world. KB32, uh, let me know what your thoughts are down below. If you stuck around this long, uh, we've got a couple things going up. Hopefully have uh, time tomorrow. We're going to do a bunch of tabletop reviews. We're going to take out three of our production rifles uh, and do a comparison on those, just an accuracy comparison. I might even scope out the barrels to see, show you guys what the difference are. And my competition rifle, uh, believe it or not, when I got the handguard, it was for a large frame and the barrel nuts work, but the barrel nut uh, screw adapter thing to put it in there did not fit my pre, whatever. I wasn't able to put the rifle together completely. So I got to take it apart and put it all back together again when I get home, but we're going to take it out to Hyatt Farms and uh, do a shooting with them. Uh, with that, I hope you guys liked the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and head over to Gun So. Support red, white, and blue. God bless America. God bless those men, women, in uniform 24-7 for our freedom, because freedom is not free. KB32, I am out of here. Boom. This is huge. And I'm surprised it took this long, honestly.